Hi everybody, this is Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike. I'm here with Janusz Polski, Rage Wilczek, and in this third and final part, we'll finish the English wheel. So today we're gonna make the lifting mechanism. I bought a piece of uh, stock metal to make a piston for the system and uh, a piece of tubing. But to fit this into this, we're gonna have to use a lathe. Since I don't own a lathe, I went to see my neighbor, Mr. Pietro, to ask him if he could help me with this very nice machine. To start, we have to board the inside of the tube that we're using as a cylinder to make sure it's smooth and precise, so that nothing might get in the way of the piston. To be able to carve inside the tube, we have to use a long tool mounted on the tool post. Once done, we'll check the inside diameter to have a reference measurement when working on the piston. Now we can set up the piece of steel stock in the faceplate, and we can start working on the piston. The first step is to try to get all the surfaces to be perpendicular to each other, starting with the base of the seal. After a first manual rough pass, Pietro sets the machine on auto advance for a finish pass on the base. Once done, he turns the piece around to start working on the side of the cylinder. This is the first pass. As you can hear for the continuous noise, the portion of stock closest to the faceplate is being worked nicely all the way around. This machine is incredibly precise and adjustments can be made up to a cent of a millimeter. On this plate, you can see all the parameters for the auto advance system, also used for tapping and threading. As the tool progresses longitudinally on the stock, getting further from the faceplate, it starts to generate more of a discontinuous noise, clear sign that the tool is no longer constantly cutting. This is because most of the stock we buy is not perfectly straight. This is evident also by the fact that removed material is coming out in short chips. The process continues all the way to the end of the piece of stock. And as you can see, Pietro has positioned the tail stock in an effort to keep the piece as aligned as possible. Here you can see that a portion of the circumference of the stock hasn't even been touched by the tool. That's not a problem, although you need to be aware of it, as machining continues, the problem will be fixed and the piece will be straight in the end. Pietro will keep on measuring the piece after every pass, so that he can set the proper depth of cut for each of the next carving cycles. We'll remove 0.5 mm of material for each pass until we reach the final size. The tool is now constantly carving out material and we can tell from the noise produced as well as from the fact that the chip is coming out as a single uniform piece of material. After many passes, this is the finishing pass that will bring the piece down to its final dimension. This last pass is a little bit thinner of the ones that we made previously and that's for a better finish. The minuscule carving lines that will be left on the surface will help trap the grease we'll use when we put the piston into the cylinder. To wrap up the machining process, we flatten the other base of the cylinder, that is pretty rough, because I cut it with a hand grinder. We thank Pietro for his help, and we go back to my studio where for the first time I'll try to CNC steel in my little CNC machine. I have to carve a vertical pocket onto the cylinder to allow me to insert the pin that will keep the piston from rotating around its own axis as it's traveling up and down. Be 
Being this the first time I work such a hard material, I've set the feed rate at only 10 millimeters per minute to avoid breaking either the spindle or the machine. Usually when I'm working aluminum on this machine, I set the feed rate between 160 and 200 millimeters per minute. So, with a lot of patience and my finger crossed, I start the machining program. Did you see that end mill? Well, each one of those cost a lot of money and that is why I'm asking you to please click the subscribe button and the like button as well as to share this video on Facebook and Twitter. That's how we finance the show. So if you keep on supporting us, we'll be able to keep on bringing you new episodes of this series. I thank you very much and let's get back to work. The whole machine was vibrating so much. Sign that the steel is way too much for my little machine. But the job is done, and that's all that matters. So, now we have our piston and our piece of tubing. They fit into each other perfectly. Now, all we need to do is do all the rest of the parts we need to do the lifting mechanism. We are going to use a uh, 100 here piece of metal used for construction work um, that is going to be our screw that is going to lift our piston. This is just wonderful, a piece of construction work, a hundred years old, finding uh, a new life, if you wish, into our English wheel. Awesome, very old school. Once we've verified that all the dimensions are okay, we shorten first the piston, And then we shorten the lifting screw. So we're gonna weld our cylinder to the big screw so that when we screw this in this will rise and uh, it will push the piston inside. So we're welding the tube to the collar, to this big bolt, and um, let's proceed with that. Polsky Rage gets immediately to work. He has to be very careful while doing these welds, because if he allows the metal to get too hot, he could end up deforming the cylinder, messing up all the precision work done with the lathe. Finally, a first function test. And of course, at the end, the screw will be the one spinning and the cylinder will be in a fixed position as part of the frame. Now we can make the matching plate to the one we have made for the support bracket to the bottom handle. A bit of grinding and a couple of holes later and it's done. We align the piston to the freshly made plate and we weld them together to make them one piece. I mean, look at this weld and tell me that it doesn't look like if it was made with a TIG welder. <laughs> Polsky Rage is really, really good at this. To add some strength to the coupling, Polsky also welds the two pieces through the hole we have made in the center of the plate. And now we are sure that these two will never ever come apart. One more test and everything seems to be working fine. Huh? Now we have to find where to join the cylinder to the frame. We mark the spot and we proceed to cutting the tube using a cut insert on a hand drill. We try to be extra careful to drive the drill as perpendicular as possible to the horizontal plane.
Janos cleans up the cut with a grinder and we realize that we made the cut a little bit off center. But that's not a big deal, we can still fix it by filling one side with the final weld. Okay, awesome. Now we can tackle the very delicate process of aligning the wheel. We do have a little play with the coupling system we made, but precision is still very, very important at this time. We place the level in a lot of different places to verify that everything is aligned properly before we start to weld the cylinder to the frame. <laughs> and by we, I mean Polsky Rage. <laughs> Once we're very, very sure of the positioning, Janus starts welding. And again, this is a very delicate process because of the possible heat deformation that might occur to the cylinder. As you can see, Polsky welds in very short strokes and he waits for the metal to cool off before the next segment is done. This is to keep the temperature down. Now that the frame and cylinder are one single piece, all that is left to do is to make a hole in the piston for the anti-torsion pin and thread it. Armed with lubricant and a good dose of patience, I start threading the hole. I don't want to mess it up, because I don't think I would have the mental fortitude to do the piece again. And here it comes, the moment of truth. So, let's have a moment of silence, shall we? It seems to work perfectly, and here it is, in all its splendor. I tightening the coupling bolts, and voila, the wheels are spinning. But before we can declare the job done, we've got to do a little test to make sure everything's working. Otherwise, what the hell did we do this thing for? <laughs> I definitely have to get the hang of it. The zigzag movement has to be pretty tight, and at first is a bit awkward. But like they say, practice makes perfect. <laughs> and there it is, the first result, the beginning of a very nice salad bowl. <laughs> I have to say that this project has been way more challenging than I initially thought. We used all the resources at our disposal, from the design software, to the lathe, to the CNC, to the different welding techniques. <laughs> Useless to say that without the help of Janus Postgrade Wilczek, I would have never been able to do this project. But also Sergio's help and Davide's suggestion, as well as Elvis's input during the design process, have been essential to the achievement of the final results. This is yet another proof that Roma Custom Bike has become a great community of passionate do-it-yourselfers and bike enthusiasts, for whom I try to be a worthy spokesman. And let me tell you, this for me is reason of great pride. If you want, you can check out part 1 and 2 of this build by checking the links below. You can also take a look at the other videos of this series by clicking the link right there. You can also like and subscribe to our channel as well as post your questions in the comment section. We get a lot of them and we answer to them all. If you want, you can also take a look at the official site for the show, where we'll post the plan for this build and where you can find our t-shirt for sale. <laughs> this is it for this episode, folks. Share it on Facebook and Twitter, and if you really, really liked it, why not? Tell your friends. I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.